Welcome to the Valley Advocate Podcast, featuring interviews that take us deeper into the people and happenings on the local scene. For more podcasts and a closer look at what's going on in the Valley, visit us at valleyadvocate.com. Hello and welcome. My name is Dave Eisenstatter, editor of The Valley Advocate, and this is The Valley Advocate podcast that we do in collaboration with Amherst Media. I'm here with uh, arts and culture editor, Gina Beavers. Yep, and we are here with Chris Roman, our columnist for Stage Struck. He's one of our famous columnists. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank Ready you. about the theater. <laughs> the theater. Yes. 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 The theater. Yes. Of course. Um, yeah, and you've been, and you know, we talked a few weeks ago, I think, mm-hmm. um, and uh, you were telling me how you've been doing this for decades. I have been doing it for decades. Yeah, yeah. like about as that, long that, as the advocates even been around. Almost. <laughs> is that, is that Longer right? than you've been alive. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I started writing for the advocate. I, I, I grew up in the theater, and then I kind of drifted into music. I was a singer-songwriter for a while. Lived in England for ten years. Worked at, did a show for three summers at the Edinburgh Fringe, which was very cool. Um, and came back here and kind of drifted back into the theater, not so much as a as a performer, as a critic. And I just sort of fell into that because the advocate was looking for a theater critic, and as a director more recently. Mm. Are you a good actor? No. <laughs> no. That's Is that why, why you became that, a critic? That, that, <laughs> when I when I was a freshman in college, after all, when I was a kid. I only wanted to be an actor, not a policeman or a fireman or anything like that. And then when I was a freshman in college, I had this epiphany, and I realized that I knew a lot of professional actors because I grew up in a Shakespeare festival in my hometown. And I realized that I was not as good as them, Mm. and they were not getting work in New York. So (laughs) I figured, no, this is probably not a good career choice. And by that time, I was writing songs and singing, you know, folk singing kind of things. And so I went that way for 15 years that's terrific yeah mm-hmm. yeah definitely and and you're directing and yeah and t- t- 15 years ago now time flies mm-hmm. um, I, I I was teaching at PVPA the P- Pioneer Valley Performing Arts High School mm-hmm. uh, teaching criticism and the, the the head of the theater department said, we've got a slot in the spring, would you like to direct a show? And I said, yeah, I've been sitting there watching shows for all these years, sitting in the critic's seat and thinking now, why isn't this working? Mm, what right. would I do if I directed this show? So I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And for t- for 12 years in a row at PVPA, I did kind of alternative kind of productions uh, starting with Brecht and going through Shakespeare and, and all kinds of stuff. That's really interesting. So what, what's the difference between sitting in the critic seat and being the one being critiqued? It drives you nuts because <laughs> you know, both sides of the brain are going at once. Because I, I, when I'm reviewing a show, I really, really try not to think, how would I direct this? You know, yeah. But I can't help thinking of as course. a director and dramaturg. Right. So I, I, I often... I, I like to read a play in advance so that I'm not so I'm watching the production and not the play itself because uh, I want to report on what what the show actually is um, and I try to give a, a sense of the show from a more or less objective point of view uh, because people want to know like what it's about what the background is what what to expect if they go but also give them a sense of the show because most of the people who read my stuff are probably not going to see a given show Right. So part of my job is as a reporter. And so you you've done Brecht, and you're, I, my understanding is you're doing Tartuffe coming up. Is that right? Uh, this this spring. My current uh, my current uh, production uh, project, <coughs> excuse me, is a new musical version of Moliere's Tartuffe, uh, written by Jeff Olmsted, a, a local musician, and it, it's just. Yeah, Tartuffe is 400 years old. It, it, was, it was first performed in 1664, and it just keeps getting more and more topical. Hmm. Because it, it's about this con man who worms his way into the household of a wealthy Parisian. Sound like anyone you know. And, and, and posing as this very pious religious man. And so it's all about religious hypocrisy, and, uh, and, and conning, uh, but also he's found out 
because he has the hots for this man's wife. Right. And he can't he can't keep his libido in his pants, so <laughs> to speak. <laughs> and so the way she uh, catches him, uh, calls him out, is by pretending to bring him on while the husband is hiding under the table. Mm. And so there's this seduction scene where she actually says, you know, if a woman says no, she really means yes, oh, which nice. is all about what's, go- what's right. going on in the Me Too era. Mm. Absolutely. So we, we, we talk about that in rehearsal. And it, it's, a, it's a comedy, almost a farce. There's lots of physical comedy in it, and the songs are terrific. Uh, but it really has a lot of serious things mm-hmm. to say about our world today without really changing anything. Right. So it kind of marries both worlds for you, music and theater. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I told the composer, I told Jeff, that he's probably not used to working on a show where, where the director is also a songwriter. Right. I thought and, about and, that because yeah. it's kind of like, how do you put, uh, how mm-hmm. do you create, a, if you're non-musical and you're do and you're directing a musical, how do you, how does that even fit in your brain? So for mm-hmm. you, it would be, it's probably pretty simple. It might yeah. drive him well, mad. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we spent some time doing for some revisions on the yeah. script uh, and, and some of the lyrics and the songs and, and some of the structure of the piece because he's a terrific songwriter and composer and, and he runs a couple of, of choirs here in the Valley, um, but he's not a playwright right. and he's done a great job adapting Moliere's script, but we tinkered with it a little bit. Do, do you feel like you like the really old stuff? I mean, I remember reading Tartuffe in school, you know, uh-huh. you know, for my history of drama class, and I think uh-huh. Tartuffe was probably like the very first thing we read. <laughs> like, that's how old it is. And uh, I, I mean, do you, do you like kind of looking back, or, or, or do you think that there's a lot of good kind of contemporary stuff, too? Well, both. I mean, Shakespeare is my guy. Okay. You know, I, I grew up in Your a Shakespeare guy. festival, yes. as I guy. said. I love Shakespeare because he knows so much. He's so wise. He writes such great plays. I mean, he's, he's just, you know, just as structurally and dramatically, Shakespeare's plays are indestructible. Right. Um, Mm. And, and but also I'll have to, like, the, try to run one over. the thing, <laughs> <laughs> the thing that I like about Shakespeare also is that he has this relationship with the audience. You know, his characters don't pretend that there's a fourth wall up there, and they're pretending to be in a whole different part of town than the audience. Mm-hmm. You know, because uh, actors share that space. You, you talk to actors and they say, you know, tonight's show, the audience was quite different, even though they just sat there quietly until mm. the curtain call. Right. But you feel it. You're sharing a room with the audience. And Shakespeare explicitly shares the room with the audience. I mean, his, his actors were out there on the stage of the Globe, mm-hmm. right there. And the audience was like standing on the ground and they could touch the actors. And, the, wow. and they heckled and hooted and, and made comments and all mm-hmm. of that. So it was, it was very rough and tumble. But the, the scripts, even if you don't do it that way, um, Im, it's implicit that the audience is right there. Right. And that's the way I like to direct a show. So there are lots of asides that Moliere put into his show and more that we've added. Uh, the audience is, the, the, first, the first scene is a party and the family comes in and they're expecting the guests and the guests aren't there because they're not in the cast, they're in the audience. Hmm. So. Is, the, is there anything that we could be doing to be better audience members instead of just sitting there? Like, I mean, like, like right. I, I, w- I would not <laughs> encourage you to, to stand up and heckle. Okay, all right, but, no heckling. But yeah, yeah. No an, an engaged Check. audience, you know, pay attention. And, and the, the, the interchange with, with, not, with a not an audience participation kind of audience, the interchange is your eyes and ears and brain engaged in the show and the audiences pick up on that if you're not paying attention they know mm. right. and they partly know because you're coughing and whispering <laughs> and, and checking your phone oh, gosh. you're not uh, gasping when the, when the knife comes out right before the murder <laughs> and yeah yeah that's right yeah and and you're not laughing or whatever right. yeah so you've seen a lot of stage productions. Good God. <laughs> <laughs> Was I, that a statement of I, obvious, I, <laughs> Captain Obvious statement? I, <laughs> I, I see 100 plays a year. Oh, and it used to be 150, wow. but I'm getting Jeez. older. <laughs> <laughs> You'll pair it down to But, you know, I, I, I consider myself so lucky to live 
here. I, I, I lived in New York for a while. I lived in London for a long time. And I grew up in a small college town, and it's great to be in this valley mm -hmm. where, where it's a small college town in many ways, but it's also not a megalopolis, but a, a cultural metropolis. Mm -hmm. And there, there are some, there must be a dozen small semi-professional and professional theater companies that, that do shows occasionally here in the Valley alone. And then, of course, the Berkshires explodes during the summer. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. I, and oh, yeah. the two, two great companies in Hartford, Theater Works and Hartford Stage. And I see as much of everybody's work as I can. Wow. So out of all those shows, what's your, which one do I ask first? <laughs> favorite or least favorite? Which mm. one would you like to answer well, first? I <laughs> you got to answer both yeah, of them. Both, yeah, yeah. I anticipated this question. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, have, I have a kind of short list of favorites. Okay. Um, Dang. For instance. <laughs> it's coming. And, okay. I, and I wrote it down. Just <laughs> um Chester Theatre Company is way up in the hills in Chester. Um, it's like 40 minutes from anywhere, yeah. but they are so good. They're in this tiny little theatre and they do great work with small casts, thoughtful plays. And they did a show, they did a couple of shows this summer, but I guess my favorite out of those was a thing called Skeleton Crew mm. by Dominique Morisot about people, it takes place in the break room of an auto plant in Detroit that is about to be closed down. Wow. Um, an all African American cast, which is really rare in these parts. Where did parts, they find all the African Americans? Um, they hire them from New York and Boston. Hmm. So there, there's, there's not too many right. uh, black area. actors yeah. who live around here, and, and especially professionals. If they want to work, they've cool. got to go away. That's pretty uh, remarkable. But it's really great that actors are willing to come yeah, here to come and, 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 do, and do anywhere. great, great exactly. work. Um, and uh, another show that's right on the top of my list is The Tempest, Shakespeare, at Shakespeare and Company, um, which they did an outdoor production of it. They used to have this big outdoor stage down the road at the Mount, but now they're on their own property in Lenox. And they started doing shows in little enclosed space, but outdoors on a, on a really simple stage. And it was so imaginative and so lively. And they're, they're, the, the, the two young lovers, uh, Miranda and Ferdinand, were played by uh, two wonderful young actors, uh, Ella Loudon and Dion Griffin Sanders, I think his name is. He's black, she's white. They made no bones about it. Well, they weren't trying to make a point. Right. But Shakespeare and Company, of all the companies here in, in this area, is the one that is really pioneering colorblind casting, uh, where you cast the best actor for the right. part. And you just let the audience participate in that reality right. or, or, or lack of reality. Um, and the, 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 the two of them together were so cute and so lively. And, this, you know, Miranda Prospero's daughter is often played as, you know, oh, daddy, what's going on? You know? <laughs> and, and she's not like that. <laughs> um, so that, that was one of my favorites. And um, there's, there's a company out in the brew. We're so starting to get into one of, my, one of my hobby horses, which is women in theater. Mm -hmm. uh, the nationwide, there's something like 60 or 70 percent of the plays that are produced by professional companies are written by men. Almost all of them are uh, mostly about men. Right. Most of the playwrights are men. Most of the directors are men. And a lot of companies here are really consciously doing something about that. And one of them is called Wham Theater. Um, and they specialize in plays by and about women, and they, they, they hire women directors, and um, all of their plays are centrally about a woman, and, and a, <clears throat> a, a revival that they did this, this past year um, is called Emily, the Comtesse de Châtelet defends herself tonight, something like that. <laughs> and it takes place in the age of Voltaire. She was a lover of Voltaire, but she was also a scientist and a really smart woman, and they did a wonderful production of that. Yeah. Finally. Well, I was, I just wanted to say really quick that I really I always look of you know your columns that you do um, mm -hmm. throughout the year. I really look forward to the ones where you're you look back at, at um, I think you call them the trifectas, right? Where they where they um, have 
um, uh, women involved, directing, mm -hmm. acting, writing, and um, and uh, and yeah, actors of color. Yeah, as yeah well. the, the trifecta is is a, a, the term that I use for uh, in the column that I write every year about women in theater. Mm -hmm. And so far, the trifecta is playwright, director, and a woman at the center of the play. I see. Mm -hmm. Yes, not mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. just you know, a, a lead part. But very often there's like two women right. and men. Yeah. Right. But for instance, Emily is really about Emily. Yes. Right. And, um, and so that, that's the trifecta because there, there were quite a few. There was something like nine shows last year where that was true. Wow. Um, ask me about the worst play. Okay. okay. What's the worst play you've ever <laughs> seen? <laughs> I'll, I'll preface this by saying that the Williamstown Theater Festival uh, is this old established summer theater up in Williamstown. Mm -hmm. And they've got a, a woman artistic director now, uh, Mandy Greenfield, who is really trying to put on a lot of new shows and shows with women and about women and by women and also people of color. And some of the shows, like, you know, aren't quite ready. Right. To, to put on. And so they, I didn't see all of their shows last year because it's, it's a little far. But I have to say, the worst show of the season <laughs> was this thing called Moscow, 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 Moscow. And That's it's, a bad start. It's a, <laughs> sounds, like a, it's sounds like a Russian code. It's a, it's a comedy <laughs> by, right, it's a comedy by Hallie Pfeiffer that's about, that, that's based on Chekhov's the Three Sisters. And, uh -huh. and it's called that because the Three Sisters sit around the whole play moaning about how they're out in the sticks and they're not in Moscow, Moscow. and they want to go to Moscow and, and Moscow is so great and here is so terrible. Mm. And you know, it, it's, a, it's a kind of cool idea to do a right. little riff on, on this classic play, but it was like, it was like teenagers doing a skit uh -huh. on Chekhov. And it just wasn't funny. You know, yeah. It was just to totally, totally a comedy over like the top. skit based on a really depressing yeah. play. Yeah. 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 It was a chance, and it yeah. maybe didn't yeah. pay and off. It just, it just, it just didn't work. Yeah. And the, the 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 three actresses were all great, and they were like working their little hearts out. But, yeah. <laughs> but on the one. other hand, there was another Chekhov riff last summer by uh, Silverthorne Theater mm -hmm. up in Greenfield mm -hmm. called Stupid Fucking Bird. Oh, good. I was hoping you were going to bring that one up. Yes. <laughs> which, is a, which is a riff on the seagull. Yes. Right. And, and it, it didn't try to, to really take it apart. It, it wasn't a, a, a parody. Uh, some of it was very funny. Some of it was very heartfelt. And it was directed by an amazing young uh, uh, woman director named to Toby Bercovici. Mm -hmm. And that one worked really well. Mm. So right. you you can make fun of Chekhov if you right. want. Yeah, that is right. funny. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. do it right. Do it yeah, right. right. Yeah, um, yeah. What what? So you've seen so many plays. What like what does mm -hmm. it take these days to wow you? Do you think? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, energy, intelligence. Um, some some sense of trying to say something with a play, but to say it well. You know, I'm I'm not a fan of agitprop theater where right. you know that we're going to make a point here. Right. You know? uh, yes. Right. Um, I I I I like good writing. Uh, I, th that that is that is not only meaningful but also clever, witty, smart, and I love good acting. You know, they're, they're, every once in a while, the they're, right there. They're, they're, there's an actor who comes along, and I, I'm thinking of Ella Loudon, the, the, mm -hmm. this, this the Shakespeare and Company actor. And, you know, she comes on stage, and she's so alive, and she's so totally present that you just want to look at her even when she's not talking. Mm. Yeah. You know, yeah. I love those moments. That's great. Have you ever written a play? Yeah, in third grade. I, <laughs> third I grade, wow. I did. That's I, funny. I, I wrote a play, and and thinking about it as a critic, I say, no, 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 you don't want to do that. <laughs> but no, no, because I I see so many plays by so many good playwrights right. that I, I wouldn't want to try. Mm. But but I'm a dramaturg. I, I've worked with 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 playwrights on their plays. Yeah. You know, as I did with Jeff right. on Tartuffe. 
Um, so to that extent, I'm, I'm editorially, and you know, the reason I like directing is because I can do that part, I can do the creative part, I can work with actors because, you know, writing, as you know, is a lonely business. So, you know, not here. So, that's why we do it in, well, that's right. in a big room with all of us. Yeah, and, and you have 10 square feet of space between yes, you. Yes, yes, yeah, definitely. Right. But yeah, so that and theater is is a collaborative venture, yeah, and right. and that's why I like working in it. Yeah, and directing too. I mean, yeah. is there like a, is there one play that you really want to get your your mm -hmm. mitts onto and and direct at some point that you haven't gotten to yet? I think the top of my bucket list is the Three Penny Opera oh. by Brecht right. and Kurt Weill, uh, which is a, about about well, it takes place in London in the early nineteenth century, but it's really about what happens under capitalism mm -hmm. and how if you're poor you get screwed and if you um, but it's it's this delightful, witty, cynical mm. <laughs> musical, and I would just love to do it sometime. It sounds like you're in town to me. That's one of my I don't know. It is. <laughs> it is. I, it's a I, it has a bad title. I really like the musical You're in Town. That's, <laughs> you're that's, it's yeah. Yeah, I it's think like, You're in Town owes a lot to. to yeah, it Brecht. sounds like yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Candide, mm. which is a, a almost an operatic musical yeah. uh, by Leonard Bernstein. Yeah. And uh, I'd love to do that sometime with singers, real singers. <laughs> That's great. So what's next for you? Well, I'm working right now on Tartuffe. Mm -hmm. And we open on the 12th of April and run for two weekends at the Hawks and Reed Performing Arts Center in Greenfield, which is like... An awesome has, space. Has yeah. Become, yeah, and it's become the hub of Greenfield's uh, cultural renaissance. Mm -hmm. They're doing great work up there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great programming. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming by, sure, and thanks for your pleasure. great uh, writing every couple of weeks. So I really look forward to to reading about theater, as I know that lots of people do. I mean, you've, been, you've got a do. following after your your decades of, of work. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, both of my fans, thank you too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it's really it's really great to have uh, th this platform and the advocates reader the advocates <laughs> readership and uh, branching out into online is also really great yeah. because you know not only do I contribute to the paper itself, but um, I can I can blog and, and review and so forth online. So that's a real gift as well. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Our pleasure. Thanks, Thanks, Chris. Nice one. Thanks. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to visit us at valleyadvocate.com.